Welcome to Strategy Saturday. I'm Charles Crillo, and today we're going to be discussing why are large investors acquiring smaller properties? And our firm started purchasing smaller assets a few years ago in one of our main markets, which is Tampa. In recent months, though, we are seeing other investors take the same approach. So why is this happening when every syndication, investment course, investment coach, mentor out there is preaching to anyone that will listen to only buy 100 plus units? Well, the main reason is price. And it's typical that complexes 100 plus units units will sell at a premium when compared to smaller complexes. And this is something that we are seeing in a number of markets throughout the Sun Belt, including Florida. Uh, yes, in a perfect market, in a perfect world, we would be only purchasing 100 plus unit deals. But in hot markets, we have been looking at smaller deals, 50 plus units, and not just 50 plus unit complexes, but putting together a portfolio of nearby properties in order to purchase as many units as possible. In one Tampa deal, we purchased a 32 unit complex with 27 units comprised of triplexes and quadplexes around it, making it a total of 59 units. And then in another Tampa deal, we purchased a 22 unit property with a 68 unit property a couple blocks away, making it a 90 unit deal. Now, there's some points to consider. I mean, the United States is seriously lacking multifamily and industrial inventory not just large complexes, but multi-family units and all size complexes. In larger deals, 100 plus units, you're normally going to see less rent growth compared to a smaller complex, since larger complexes have been targeted by most investment groups, while complexes under 100 units are typically passed over until now by larger groups. And this is mainly due to the fact that larger investors want to place you know, five plus million dollars in each deal and they're going to pay a premium to do so. Now, some cons with doing this is usually the properties you're buying have no amenities. Um, they're slightly harder to manage in lease units because not every property has a leasing office or on-site management. If you have tens of millions of dollars to place for each deal, this is not the strategy for you. But new investors in the market might be paying more for management until they have purchased multiple smaller complexes and get some scale. So there's more legwork involved because you're going to have to purchase more properties, um, do more closings, underwrite more deals uh, in order to get the same scale you would have with just buying a larger complex. Now you have to purchase more deals to place the same amount of capital and the time involved to do a deal is similar to a much larger asset. So if you're buying a 50 unit property, the due diligence is very similar to you buying a 250 unit property, but you're just not getting the returns you probably once were uh, a few years back. Now, some of the pros are is you're still buying deals and placing capital. So even if they're going into smaller complexes, I mean, you're still putting money in, you're still putting your investors money to work, and you can still make money on those. It's just you're doing a lot more deals to place the same amount of capital. Now, it's great for smaller groups or groups where you already have a management footprint in place in the market. Because the more units you buy, the less expensive your management becomes. Um, smaller properties will typically operate on lower expense ratios than larger properties, mainly due to not having amenities, and you usually don't have full-time people in all the different positions. Um, a rule of thumb that we'll use is every 100 units you have, you usually will have one office person, admin person, leasing person, whatever you want to call them, and then one handyman. And it kind of goes from there. And that's what you can kind of work off your numbers. If you're in an older asset, you might need more uh, on the handyman side. If you're on a newer asset, you might be able to trim that a little bit, um, like having two full-time people on a, a, you know, a new asset that's 250 units. Now, smaller deals are less perfect, and it's a less perfect market. And I believe it's easier to find value in smaller complexes, say 10 to 30 units, uh, or even a 50 unit deal versus a 200 unit deal, because it's being sold by a very sophisticated investment group. And they're going to have all the market knowledge, they're going to have all the broker price opinions, they're going to know exactly what this price, what the, what the property is going to sell for and what the value of that property is. Um, so I feel that it's a less perfect market. And when it's a less perfect market, that's when you're able to get a deal. So I hope you enjoyed. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe, submit comments and potential show topics, topics at globalinvestorspodcast.com. Look forward to two more episodes next week. See you then.
Nothing in this episode should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Any investment opportunities mentioned on this podcast are limited to accredited investors. Any investments will only be made with proper disclosure, subscription documentation, and are subject to all applicable laws. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Syndication Superstars, LLC, exclusively.